And welcome to Cowboy Logic, everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia, along with Don Newen. Been a tough week. Been it a has really, been. really, really tough week. You Ladies know? and gentlemen, if you don't mind, we're going to take a minute and we're going to talk about something that's very personal to us. And that is that we lost a good patriot. America lost a good patriot. We lost a good friend this past week. And we're, we'd like to remember him for a moment here. Mm -hmm. Talking about Presley Stutz, he passed away this week. Many of you might have seen him on War Room, actually, uh, talking about South Carolina and the voting problems there, like we don't have them in Georgia and Arizona and just about every state in the union. He was a good friend and patriot. <sighs> yes, he had COVID. He believed in choice when it came to vaccines and masks. He spearheaded a protest outside Kamala Harris's visit to South Carolina earlier this year when she came to push for the vaccine mandates and the vaccine. You know, everybody's got to get vaccinated, right? So he had a couple hundred people outside and, and they were protesting her visit. He was an ardent supporter of Donald Trump and the Make America First movement. Presley was a huge part of the South Carolina GOP. Sorry, folks, it's going to be hard for me to get through this. And the Tea Party movement. He put together the Rock the Red convention Don and I had and the honor of emceeing a few times, the latest just in early June, where Lynn Wood and General Flynn were keynote speakers. Presley retired in 2011 as a commander in the Navy, over 30 years experience serving as a chaplain since 1980. And for 22 of those 30 years, he served with the Marines. He saw active duty in Operation Desert Storm, Iraqi Freedom, and we're deeply saddened by his passing. But this, folks, let me tell you, is the rest of the story. Presley was at the January 6th Trump rally at the Capitol. He never went inside. But ever since, he was targeted and harassed to the point where he was essentially everything but strip searched when he tried to get on a plane. You can see here, as the Gateway Pundit reported, his pants are open, the TSA is giving him a full body check. The harassment almost caused him to miss his flights a few times, which I'm sure wasn't on purpose at all. Nah, not at all. Well, and this happened every time he flew, ladies and gentlemen. After January every 6th, time. yep. Thank God Presley's lovely wife, Patty, who also had COVID and was hospitalized with him earlier this month, recovered, and she is now home. But what you don't know is the rest of the story. The local papers, of course, played up the fact that an anti-vaxxer or a masker, anti-masker died of COVID. But that, again, is not the story at all. Well, I'm going to show you this great picture, courtesy of Dan Harville of Presley and General Flynn at the Rock the Red convention in June. Everybody, please, whether you're a Democrat or Republican, this affects us all. Early treatment is key. I know firsthand that the hospital essentially denied him the best of care. They were asked to give him hydroxychloroquine or ivermectin. That was denied. The family was told it's not CDC protocol. Well, what happened to right to try? That's what I want to know. They treated those $3 pills like they were the plague. You can't take a $3 pill that's been safe for 60 plus years. And in some countries, ivermectin is even being used again, as we'll see with our own Dr. X-ray, as uh, it's working. No, no, you can't have that because it's only a $3 pill. He was given remdesivir, which is only about 40% effective. He was not given Regeneron, which is CDC protocol for those over 65. Presley was 64. Could that be why he was denied remdesivir? I don't know. I mean, Regeneron. Who knows, but he never got it. I was on a conference call with his family. He was told they were denied this treatment for one ridiculous reason or, the, or another. The doctors in many cases are having their jobs and licenses threatened if they even suggest giving these treatments for COVID. That is the bigger picture. Hydroxychloroquine has been safe for over 60 years, even for pregnant women. They would rather have you take a vaccine that is questionable at best, deadly on many occasions, which again, our Dr. X-ray will tell us about later on in the show. But Presley, Stutz, you will be missed. Here's another picture from the Rock the Red convention Dan Harville took of Don <laughs> kissing Presley. <laughs> I think I look a little stunned there, but hey, anything goes now. Uh, you, you, right? weren't, you weren't ready for me to do that. And ladies and gentlemen, I need to let you know that uh, 
you know, Presley's like a brother to me, was like a brother, and will remain like a brother to me. And uh, we were on stage in front of four to 500 people, and uh, that just kind of felt like the right thing to do right then was to give <laughs> old Presley a big old kiss on the side of his little chubby cheek. So that's what we ended up doing. Donna wasn't looking, wasn't ready for it, and no, it you totally can kind of see by the look on her face that uh, caught her by surprise as much as I may have Presley. But uh, in that audience, watching me do that was General Flynn, <laughs> and <laughs> as well as Lynn Wood. So. That's too, too funny. I know, uh, but that really is the rest of the story. There are thousands who battled this problem the past 18 months when we were told two weeks to flatten the curve. And it's pretty apparent the powers that be in our healthcare system and the government, unelected bureaucrats, have anything but our best interests at heart. And I hope they meet their judgment day sooner rather than later. Presley Stutz, Semper Fi, and we have your six.